Hello, uh, Vlogosphere. It's got to be a term someone used back in 1995. I am, uh, it's been a while. It's been a while since I have vlogged. I feel bad. I feel weird putting all these vlogs online because I'm like, they are very low quality. I am barely trying. Putting a lot of garbage on the internet. But I guess it's... I sort of feel like sometimes it's like... Well, I know with Twitter at least, people... I know people feel a lot of pressure with Twitter. A lot of comics are like, oh, I want to make it good. I feel like with Twitter, like... You put bad stuff on, nobody notices. You put good stuff on, people do notice. They're more like they notice the good stuff than the bad stuff. You just kind of tune out the bad stuff. Sure, this is being okay. No negativity. Okay, back. Sorry, you can tell it's been a while because I'm not. I'm not following the rules. Being negative. I'm gonna make up for it. I'm gonna make up for it. There's an L. So, oh look what I got. It's my new book. Coming out soon. Kid presents. I illustrated it. Illustrated those little presidents. Little presidents. Doo -doo. So, and this was this isn't the final. This is um, this was a proof, but I wrapped it around the old book, and so I asked them to nudge. This is not my changes were. So I already made some changes to this one, but the nudge this stuff an eighth of an inch that way, and on the back nudge this stuff. Three sixteenth of an inch that way. So I went to my bank yesterday to get a new card. I want to get a new, a, a second, a, th a third account. It's exciting. No negativity. I want to get up. So I went to my bank yesterday to get a third card, so that I could use it to just like write off all my expenses for uh, design and comedy. So at the end of the year, when I do my taxes, I can just say all this stuff that I bought with this card. And every time I go to the bank, they try to get make me get a credit card. I don't want a credit card. I just want a debit card. I don't have credit cards. And the lady's like, why don't you want a credit card? And I was like, well, because when I buy stuff with a credit card, I didn't buy it. You pay for it with a credit card, but you didn't actually buy it. And then later in the mail, I get a piece of paper that I have to pay to actually buy the thing. It's twice as much work. Now, the reason to get a credit card would be like if you don't have enough money to buy the thing. But I'm like, if I don't have enough money to buy the thing... I'm gonna try. I'm really gonna try not to buy the thing. I guess the other reason would be to help your credit report, but my credit's fine. I was recently in oh San Francisco. I've been doing a lot of traveling. I think the last time I vlogged, I was in Atlanta, <clears throat> and then I was also just in San Francisco. It's been hard getting around because my sciatic nerve is pinched. If you have been within a ten mile radius. You know about my sciatic nerve. I've been complaining nonstop. You know why? Because it hurts. That's why I've been complaining. Because it's painful. Yeah. Really. Uh, symphony of pain. And your sciatic nerve runs all the way from your back down to your heel. So you can get pain anywhere along that region, which is to half your body. And it changes. It's like a... A very beautiful, varied canvas of uh, torture. Little stabbing pains. You get Charlie Horse things. You get long, slow, moaning pain. Throbs in the night. Um, all over the place. So, and I haven't been able to get it checked out because I uh, my healthcare hadn't kicked in yet. Just kicked in. And I've been out of town. So I'm going to go get it checked out. But I've been complaining a lot. Because it hurts. I haven't been walking too much. I've been trying to avoid walking. But I was just in San Fran, and they got a lot of hills. I saw, uh, I went to the De Young Gallery in San Francisco. They had an exhibit on modernism. Here's some of the pieces they had. That's a, um, this is by, whoa, Hans Hoffman, Autumn Gold. That piece. And then this is right by Burgoyne Diller. 
This is called First Theme. It's a good show. <clears throat> I bought some books. Oh, I, I started rereading How Fiction Works, which I've read before by James Wood. It's really good. One thing I he talks about there is just ob objectivity in writing. He talks about free and direct style. Which is like when you're writing in the, when you're writing and it's the conflation, it's when like how in writing you can't tell what is the author thinking, what is the character thinking, and how you can mix those two things in your writing. Um, the unreliable narrators. So called omniscience is almost impossible. As soon as someone tells a story about a character, Narrative seems to want to bend itself around that character. That's true. That's different from what I was talking about. Uh, oh, so, okay, here's... So this is explaining free and direct style. Okay. He looked over at his wife. Quote, she looks so unhappy, he thought. Almost sick, end quote. He wondered what to say. Okay, that is direct or quoted speech, you know. He looked over at his wife. She looks so unhappy, he thought. Almost sick. He wonder what to say. That's direct speech. Now here, this passage has no quotations. He looked over at his wife. She looked so unhappy, he thought, almost sick. He wondered what to say. That is reported or indirect speech. So it's the internal... We still know it's what he's thinking. We're telling you what it's what he's thinking. Okay, now look at this version. Compare this version. He looked at his wife. Yes, she was tiresomely unhappy again, almost sick. What the hell should he say? We're telling you the same information, and the author's saying it, but we're saying it in the character's voice. We're not telling you he thought, he said. You know it's what he thought because of the, the, the way I'm saying it. It sounds conversational. It sounds like something that character would say. That's free and direct style. Um, and he was taking it even further, even more like stream of consciousness. He looked at her. Unhappy, yes. Sickly. Obviously a big mistake to have told her. His stupid conscience again. Why did he blurt it? All his own fault and what now? Like, that's not real. <laughs> All his fault and what now? You can't write that. But you can if a character's thinking it, because people, you really think that way in fragments. You don't think like a good writer. Unless you're a good writer. But, like, the good writer is trying to write a character that's not a writer. That's the challenge, though. A lot of times you write things and you want your character to notice these things. But as a reader, I'm like, really? The character noticed the friscalating dusk light? you know, as it danced on the ponds, that's how he, he didn't just think like, shit, the pond's bright. That's what a real, you know. Anyway, so How Fiction Works, great book. First half. Second half is a little more, first half is more practical and second half is more academic. And I would say it's a book less about like learning how to write than it is learning how to read. It just helps you read. Appreciate writing more. Oh, and I bought... Poking a Dead Frog, which is interviews with comics. It's pretty good. I don't usually go in for that sort of thing, but it's pretty good. Mike Sachs wrote it. I'm trying to think if I got anything else. Went to San Fran. Visited my old uh, college buddy, Brad Kale. He works in advertising now. He's really good. Uh, we, we went to design school together. And... Um, She's doing advertising now, and he showed me this one ad he did, and it's, like, incredible. Like, in this one scene, for, like, three seconds, you see a, a pickup truck pull into a gas station, and it's got a trailer on the back. It's just, like, a Ford F-150, and it's, tr it's pulling a spaceship, like a full, like, a, a, like a, a rocket, you know? And um, it's, like, a three-second clip in a commercial for the Yellow Pages. It looks completely real. I mean, obviously, it's CGI. I asked him, I was like, and it's beautifully shot, like, cut, 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 all these different things. I asked him how much it cost. Half a million dollars. That's insane. I'm making books. <laughs> it cost a lot less. When people find out I make books, they're like, are those still, people still buy those? Or they're like, isn't that industry in shambles and I'm like no nah, it's fine I mean it's books people still read them I still read them 
single-handedly with my book consumption, I am supporting a large uh, percentage of the industry. So there we are, the 10-minute mark. The fellow goes a little rusty. This, 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 this particular um, vlog, and I apologize for that. No redos in life or in vlogging. Vlogging is a lot like, oh, I rewatched Forrest Gump. Man, it held up. Totally held up. I hadn't seen it in years. It was better than I remember it. You know, it was a different time back then. It's like a funny, I think if you did that movie now, people would be like, that's cheesy. Or like they would do it wrong. I think they would do it wrong. It was very genuine. Not ironic at all. I don't know if you could make it today without like trying to make it more clever, more snarky, you know. But there's a weird part. Okay, I'm at the 11 minute mark. Sorry. Okay, going to wrap it up. But uh, so Jenny, right, forced to gump his love with Jenny and they have sex. And then like a couple years later, she reveals that he, she had a baby with him. And she also reveals she's dying of this like disease and the doctors don't know what it is. But you know it's AIDS. In the movie, they insinuate it's AIDS. So, like, did she have AIDS when she had sex with Forrest Gump? And does her baby now have AIDS? Now, I talked to a doctor, and he said that, like, a baby hasn't been born with AIDS in, um, I forget what state he mentioned, in, like, a long time, because the drugs are so good now. Even if you have AIDS, they can give you these drugs, and your baby won't be born with it. And he said, I think even, like, a while ago, if you had AIDS, the chance of your baby having AIDS was only... 20% or 40% something I, I was surprised a little. I thought it was like 100% so he said it's possible Andy you can have sex with someone who has AIDS and you might not get it so like she might have had AIDS and she had when she had sex with Forrest or she might have not contracted until after she had sex with Forrest because I think she had you would think she had it before she had sex with Forrest because after she had sex with Forrest she wasn't doing any more partying or drugs or things as far as I know that was all before that was pre Forrest sex so anyways, we're like, I wonder if anybody talking about it online, and we put it in Google, and there's like tons of people have Googled, so wait, did Forrest Gump and his son have AIDS? Like, there was like a lot of literature and speculation on it, surprising amount. Okay, thank you for watching, I'll talk to you later. Bam!